out on the road again doing some vlogging and this time I get to meet up with Glenn Gabe, somebody obviously you probably, if you read what I write at Surgeon's Roundtable, you'll see that many, many of my stories include quotes from Glenn. He's one of the most uh, seasoned SEOs in the following space for a really long time, so I'm a huge fan of Glenn. A huge way of topics we're going to discuss across all the news around AI and uh, core updates and disavowing maybe and just core old SEO stuff that I think you all will benefit a lot from meeting him up in uh, his region his home region somewhere um, at a nice facility and I hope you enjoy it it's gonna be uh, about an hour and a half drive but I scheduled a bunch of other vlogs while I'm there as well so but definitely worth going out there just for Glenn himself hope you enjoy it um, and looking forward to the drive actually it's been a while since I've been on the road uh, driving this car um, I actually just got back from Seattle last week for the Microsoft event so you have some context of when this was recorded so it's about a week or so after actually basically a week and a day um, eight days from when Microsoft announced their new co-pilot and uh, nine days from when Google announced Google Bard um, so there's some, some context in terms of when this was recorded this will probably be out a lot later um, but anyway I think you're gonna enjoy this video a lot make sure to like like subscribe and definitely comment let me know what you think and how I can improve these things Hope you enjoy it. Bye. So I'm passing my old rusty brick office. Been in a new one for oh, I don't know, almost probably over 10, maybe 12 years now. Um, the other one I was in for 10 years, I believe. And I do miss the old office. And my lease with my current office, which is completely empty and has been empty for the past four years now since COVID. Um, is expiring in about a year and a half, so I could definitely move somewhere that's smaller or just not get an office because only I and somebody else going to come into the office. So anyway, this is the office location. It's coming up right now on the right by this light over here. You make a right down there and then the old Rusty Brick office is there. I'm going to get on the highway right after this, but it was on Executive Boulevard and it was a nice office, really nice building down there. Um, I may miss it a little bit, but maybe I'll come back there. I can always look to maybe get a small office there if I need to. Anyway, here's the here's the trip. We're off on our way to see Glen Gabe. Right. About a few minutes away from where I'm supposed to meet up with Glen Gabe. Um, been a nice drive, a little bit of traffic, but weather's great. Looking forward to the chat. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. All right, Glenn, thank you so much for having me in your home here. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. It's pretty cool, spots. right? It's yeah, pretty cool in Princeton. I Welcome you, to Princeton. Thanks for having me. I promise you there's ducks in the other room. So if you see one walk by, it's Glenn's fault. We have beautiful ducks in Princeton. <laughs> it's a beautiful area. So I was driving through here, um, leaving my area, which is kind of similar, but you have to like pass through like New York City nastiness. No offense to New York Cityers, like Lily Ray and so forth. But um, then it was just calm drive and it was really nice so yeah yeah thanks, yeah. For, thanks for having me absolutely um and um can you tell quickly people in that camera who you are and what they, about yourself right right in there right in that little camera yeah there. sure so i'm glenn game from g squared interactive um been in seo pretty long time uh went full blast with g squared interactive in about 2008 um after doing a, a lot of work in-house at companies at, at agencies as well um, and right now I focus heavily on helping companies that have been impacted by major algorithm updates or any type of major drop in traffic. It could be manual actions, it could be an unconfirmed update or uh, confirmed updates like product reviews updates or broad core updates. Cool, and as I was telling you while I was driving here in the car, Glenn is probably one of the most people, outside of maybe John Mueller, one of the, probably the second most person that I cite on, on my site. I think I actually have data on that. So I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, <laughs> but I feel like I'm constantly citing you. And one of the most, one of the people that I talk to the most probably in the search industry. So thank you for your help. I appreciate everything you do for myself. And of course, for the wider search community, I do, do, do appreciate it. No, that. thank you. And thank you for what you do and what you've done for a really long time. I just I, I, I feel honored <laughs> to actually be able to write on Search Engine Roundtable. That is a huge honor. Oh, yes. Also, Glenn is one of the few people to ever write on the Search Engine Roundtable. I usually don't let people write. But mostly because I just want to keep it for myself. I'm kind of selfish. But <laughs> you provide such great stuff. Even before being confirmed, the relevancy update in January, you spotted that before anybody else. And you spotted a lot of things before anybody that else. That was but. really cool to get confirmation of that. Yeah. I mean, fun. it was pretty clear something big happened, but right. it was cool to hear that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's 
we can talk about forever about the history of SEO and stuff like that, but we're not yeah. going to do that. We're going to talk about what's now, but what's now is actually going to be probably like a couple months before, just because it takes time to get this video out. Um, the big craze, at least last week, I flew out to Microsoft for them to show us their Bing Chat GPT, Copilot, AI Assistant, and the day before that, Google launched their Bard. Now that it's, been, it's basically about a week, a week and a day after they announced all this stuff, and you've had actually you just got access to it yesterday. I just got access last night, and I've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about it so far? Um, so far, I've been testing a lot of queries that um, drive a lot of traffic for clients, um, and then just testing things that I do on a regular basis just to see what it's like. It's really interesting. I mean, accuracy-wise, I haven't seen too many crazy things yet because I know a lot of people are really you know pushing hard and trying to trying to see where it can mess up and stuff. I haven't seen that yet, but I'm sure I will. Um, I think it's really interesting, first of all, that there are links to publishers galore. Okay, there are links at the very bottom, plus as you hover over a citation, um, you're seeing links to publishers, sometimes multiple links to publishers. And there are ads occasionally that show up above the citations, um, but it's not overwhelming. I think it actually works. Like I didn't find it strange or anything like that. And then the other interesting thing is that for certain queries below the answer, you can get different modules like shopping results, uh, local results, news results. So, you know, Sadia Nadella, you know, claimed that and vowed that he would link to publishers. And I'm seeing that firsthand. Now, will that change? We don't know. But right now, there's a lot of links to publishers. So I was very happy to see that. I've been sending that to clients, by the way. Like, you are here. You are being cited. Blah, blah, blah. We'll see if it ends up with traffic. But Right. Do you think um, people will click or no? I, d I don't know. I think for certain things, they will. Um, like, for example, I did, um, I shared it this morning. It was like best baby strollers for 2023. Right. Um, and, you know, there, you know, it prompts you with additional questions after that. Um, like, which are the safest, which are the top rated? What do you recommend? I thought was interesting for certain things, right. um, which it did. It wouldn't actually provide a recommendation, although that was there. But for certain things, I found myself wanting to click through. If it was newsy and wanted to find out more, right. if it was a list and I wanted to read more about that, absolutely. For other things, though, boy, did it provide a ton of information and a ton of content that I was pretty much good and didn't need to click through. Right. The fear is, yeah, there's links there, and they they definitely thought it out. I mean, they thought, yeah. like, what are publishers going to say? And they really threw links everywhere and yeah. vertical results everywhere. And it's kind of a similar issue with, like, feature snippets. Like, people aren't going to click. They do click. Yeah. Depending on the query, obviously, how old is Barack Obama? They don't need to click. Right. You know, what's the weather? They don't need to click. Um, but when you want to dig in deeper, of course, they might click. But with this, the answers are so long, I feel like maybe the searcher is going to have information over though before they actually get to the bottom or those citations. And they might be like, I'm done. I, I can't click anymore. Yeah. And, and also, so I have two kids, 18 and 16 now. And yeah. forever I've been talking about that they literally use control F all the time. They don't want to read long articles. Right. You know, they want the answers quickly. When I ask my son to look at something, all he does is look at the featured snippet. I have to remind him to actually click through to the site to make sure it's the latest information. Right. So, you know, featured snippets, I've been a big, you know, advocate that they actually drive a ton of traffic. A lot of them. Some don't. Right. If it's a quick answer, sure or not. But I've seen them drive tons of traffic. Um, this is a whole different animal because, like you said, you could get a lot of that information. And I think of 18 to 16 year olds, and I'm like, I know if they get that answer in that from the AI assistant, that they're probably not going to click through as much. So that, it'll be really interesting. It's great to hear Microsoft say that they're going to link to publishers. But as I put, I wrote a post recently about the code red that triggered thousands of code reds at publishers, and I explained, I showed two different sites with the difference in traffic between Google and Bing, and it's not even close. One was 13 million clicks over the past three months from Google, right. and it was 400,000 from Bing. The other was not, it was like 40,000 clicks from Bing. So, you know, it's great that Bing's doing this, um, but Google needs to, in my opinion, needs to provide citations and links or else there could be a lot of trouble. I think they will. Um, it would be interesting to see, I don't know if you right clicked on the URLs to see if there's any additional refer tracker to see if it's coming from the chat box, the right side panel. It show, I, I, I looked in Google Analytics as I was actually doing okay. this, and it shows up as being organic. Being organic. Yeah. It would be very interesting. This, like Google Refuse, remember they built the feature snippet 
um, filter in performance reports and search console. Yes. And they never yeah. released it. It would be yes. very interesting to see. I was very excited when that was coming. Yeah, and they pulled yeah. it back. And it makes us wonder as publishers, hey, is it really sending enough traffic? Right. Are hiding something from us? And I really right. do think that if Google and Bing fully launched this, they should have in their webmaster tools or their Google search consoles yeah. that information so we could actually validate that, which uh, I think I, would look bad. I think I think we're going to see a lot less clicks. It has to be. Yeah, I think, specifically from chat. I, I think especially when you compare featured snippets with what, what's going on in AI chat, it's not even going to be close. There's going to be less clicks, absolutely. Right. But you know, if you think about it, when that filter was in Google Search Console, it would enable anyone to know when they lost a featured snippet to compare when they had it. Right. And boy, that's the data, right? You would right. know 100% if you were ranking number one or two, and then you got the featured snippet and suddenly clicks drop, right. then you would know, or vice versa. But Google clearly pulled back on that. But I agree. I mean, it would be amazing if Bing Webmaster Tools, you know, included that as a filter or something. And when Bard rolls out, I doubt that they're not even providing featured snippet right. information. So I highly doubt that they would provide Bard information. Uh, Maybe, you know, AI we'll chat. I mean, I could see them since it's such an important feature, Bard yeah. for Google, that when they come out with these important features like Google Discover and AMP, they just load up Google Search Console. That's like priority. Get it into everywhere. So maybe they'll provide it at some point, but it's very early on. Probably the time this video comes out, you might be laughing yeah. at us and be like, you guys are completely wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Or you're right. like, you're dead on. So yeah, yeah, it'd be yeah. great to look back at this video when it goes out and be like, you know. Well, right. I mean, think about this. I wrote a post about how to track multi-search, yeah. you know, and there's no tracking, right? I mean, so like even that, which they're really pushing now, right. you can't track it in Google Search Console at all. Right. Um, so that's our AI segment on search, but that moves in, us into AI content, which maybe a month before all the AI search features came out or were demoed outside of Neva and the ones that kind of showed it off earlier, um, all these publishers were talking about how we could use AI to build content, right. or better content, or content from scratch. BuzzFeed announced they're using it. Their stock flipped like crazy. Yes. Um, a bunch of other publishers said they're going to do it. And I, I, find it I kind of find it hilarious that and a lot of it, a lot of SEOs were like, yeah, AI content's gonna be great, it's gonna improve stuff, it's gonna make us better writers, it's gonna help us with our SEO. And then Google and Bing announce it and they're like, with their own AI features, and they're like, this is gonna kill search, it's gonna kill right. SEO, <laughs> AI is evil. Right. Not that everybody, a lot of people were like, not like that, but I'm just, it's kind of, kind of funny like that. Uh, yeah. Um, so what are your thoughts about, and obviously the AI, using AI content for SEO purposes, for content yeah. development, and then Google's, Danny Sullivan wrote a blog post about Google being okay with it. Yep. Yeah. So um, AI content ever since this really started hitting, especially since, you know, ChatGPT launched in November, um, I've been neck deep in talking with clients, analyzing sites that were impacted by, let's say, the October spam update, which definitely impacted some sites with low quality AI content. So um, I think it's a really dangerous area for publishers right now. I think that at scale, Google's gonna be able to pick it up. Like everyone, you know, I have a blog post with the top seven right now AI content detection tools, right? right? And they're great, but you can get around them. But my biggest thing, which I constantly am saying on Twitter is Google's way more sophisticated than those tools, right? right? So it's going to be able to pick stuff up. Now, if it's low quality and you do this at scale, Good luck, because I've had many companies reach out since the October spam update. I've analyzed sites that were impacted by that, and some of them were using AI content heavily and tipped the scales too far, right? And it's not just AI content. It's like, you know, companies, some even bigger brands that were tr auto-translating content right. that got hit. So it wasn't even AI. It's just you're using Google Translate at scale, and, you know, 100,000 pages hit, hit a site, and suddenly, boom, they get hammered. Right. So um, I think m my advice to publishers and to clients is if you're going to use it to help inform your writers, if someone's really going to be reviewing it and, and editing that and making sure it's accurate and really good and helpful and valuable content, cool. If you're literally just saying, write it and you're publishing it and that's it, and you do that at scale, I think that's a really dangerous area. Right, and that kind of like yeah. flips back to the previous conversation of the search engines, Google, and Bing having so much scrutiny about what they're producing as answers. Yeah. Of course, probably 90% of them, 80% of them are probably great, but everybody's pulling out that 10, 20% that are really bad. Right, right. And that's the issue. They can't have humans review every query before it goes out. Right. 
Right. And you're, and you're telling, obviously when you produce content, you definitely should do that. Yes. Um, and the tools can definitely detect if it's wrong. But if yeah. these tools are, tech, are building stuff that is wrong, how good are they going to be able to detect if you're wrong? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a great point. Yeah. And, and I think that, so we're right now at a point where AI content, the AI content generation tools are, are good. Okay, and some are, you know, like I, I think people have said it, it's like a B minus in, in right. a class, right? But with the next models and the models after that and the models after that, that's why Google finally came out with that blog post. They've always said we're not against AI content for the most part recently. Right. We're just against low quality AI content. Right. Now they have the official blog post because they know at some point you're going to have a really good AI <laughs> writing this content. Right. And it, it may be tough for them to figure out at that point. But what they can figure out it's just low quality content overall anyway. It's back to the medieval panda days of like sites right. that just had average, below average content and a lot of it and they got hammered. You know, and now Broadcore updates are kind of doing that. Now we have the helpful content update and that is the key in my opinion. Right. I know a lot of people have really hammered that helpful content update. It didn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. But that's the piece where they can basically upgrade it to really detect a lot of that stuff. And maybe that's the one that it runs on a regular basis and you know starts you know hitting sites that are doing it right. heavily. So it's it'll be interesting to follow. So you said a bunch of things there, kind of break it down. One is the, okay. the caveat of recently Google changed. Everything. Yes, yeah, and that is true. And I, when I spoke to Danny Sullivan about the latest AI blog post content, yeah. he's like, "We're trying to make this. We're trying to clarify what we said before. And yeah. What we said before was just recent, like you said. Yeah. Um, historically, mostly around translated content and yeah. using AI and automation. Yeah. Google's always their guidelines said automation was." Bad, Correct. Right. Generally, they tweaked that over the years to say it's more okay. Yeah. And then John Mueller kind of changed his tune over the years, saying AI is getting better. Yeah. We'll see what happens if right. anybody. And so then Danny Sullivan came out with those who, why, where's to clarify that and all that fun stuff. And I like how you mentioned the helpful content update uh, because yeah, like you said, really haven't seen much tremor with it, but I think it sets them up to go ahead and say we had Panda for the people who produce low quality content. Yeah. And now we have this helpful content update for not just the people who produce low, low quality content, but low quality content in general, um, including generated by machines. And that right. I'm pretty excited about.